Today we're making banana bread and this is a recipe I've used for about five years and it's evolved um, over the years to uh, incorporate more ingredients and become more flexible. My philosophy for baking banana bread at least is to be flexible. Um, sometimes you don't have a certain number of ingredients, sometimes you have one ingredient and not the other. Um, this recipe lets you kind of customize the banana bread to your taste. Okay, let's begin. Half a cup of melted butter, three quarter cups of sugar, two eggs, one half cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking soda, half a teaspoon of vanilla, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Two ripe bananas. This ingredient is variable. You can go with another banana, another ripe banana, one cup of pineapple in juice, or you can try uh, a cup of peaches, or a cup of your favorite fruit. Half a cup of raisins. This is also optional as well. If you have pecans or walnuts, half a cup of that. And then this is also optional. Um, I always like adding blueberries because it gives it a really nice color. So uh, if you have blueberries, a cup of blueberries. So first, take the melted butter and um, pour it in a large mixing bowl like this. Then add the sugar. And then take a fork or a whisk and combine them. You want to mix them enough so they're, you get a kind of a cream-like consistency. Once they've been mixed it up, add the, the eggs beaten well, like this. And then mix again until all the ingredients have been combined into a cream. Once you're done, you should get something that looks like this. It looks kind of uh, like custard almost. And uh, you can see the consistency, it's, it's fairly thick. Okay. After this, you add your uh, dry ingredients. So a lot of recipes will tell you to uh, mix the dry ingredients separately and then combine them. But um, I don't like using a lot of mixing bowls, uh, makes the cleaning easier. So what I like to do is, I'll just uh, take the dry ingredients and add them right on top of the wet ones. So, um, you know, as you can tell, I, I'm not a baker. Banana bread and sourdough bread are the only things I, I make pretty much. Um, so uh, this is sort of to let you know that this recipe is fairly easy and you kind of have a lot of leeway on how you do things and, you know, you mess up one part, it, it's okay. Um, and so I started doing this because I was lazy. So um, add the flour on top of uh, your butter, sugar, and uh, egg mixture. Just sprinkle it over. Okay. Next, take the, the baking soda and sprinkle it over the flour um, fairly evenly. So you don't, you don't want all the, the baking soda to be one area. And then uh, take the salt and do the same thing. Just sprinkle it over the flour and baking soda mixture. Okay. So now that all the dry ingredients are in there, um, go ahead and lightly mix the, the salt and baking soda with the flour over, over the uh, wet ingredients. So just take a fork and mix it like this. 
So before you combine the flour and baking soda um, and um, salt with the other stuff, you, you kind of want to mix them together. Okay, once all the, the dry ingredients are fairly um, well mixed together, combine the, the dry ingredients with the white ingredients. Use a, a fork or whisk. Once you're done mixing it, you should get a fairly thick batter. It's almost like a, a cake batter. So at this point, um, we start adding our fruits. So I have my uh, two bananas that I crushed. You can use your hands, you can use a fork or a spoon. So go ahead and add that in. And then add in your variable ingredient. Um, in this case, I used uh, a cup of pineapples for my can with some of the uh, liquid still inside and I crushed it. You can use your hand or a spoon to uh, crush the pineapples. And as I was saying before, this is a variable ingredient. So I could have used another banana or uh, I could have used some uh, canned peaches, uh, one cup of canned peaches. So go ahead and add this in. Okay, mix well. You want to keep on mixing until um, all the, the fruit is mixed in with the batter fairly well. It's evenly um, distributed throughout the mixture. Once the, uh, all, the, all the fruit has combined with the batter, it should look something like this. It's fairly thick. Okay, so now what we'll do is we want to uh, take a, a bread pan and uh, butter it. So I'll go ahead and do that now. So we have our buttered bread pan. I just took a stick of butter from the refrigerator and just spread it um, throughout the pan. And um, one thing I, I should have mentioned earlier is that before you start buttering your pan, uh, preheat your oven to 350 degrees. We're going to cook banana bread um, at that temperature for about one hour. Okay, so I have the pan and I have my mixture. So just go ahead and add the mixture to the pan. I have my banana bread mixture 
in the bread pan. So now I'll go ahead and take the vanilla, and this is just imitation vanilla, you can use real vanilla of course, and just sprinkle it over the mixture. Uh, then add the raisins and sprinkle that over as well. Then add the pecans or, or walnuts or whatever kind of nut you like. Sprinkle that over. And then uh, take a fork and gently mix, to mix the, the new ingredients into the batter. You just want to mix enough so that everything's submerged. Next, take the blueberries, and uh, I use frozen blueberries, and you notice there's some liquid at the bottom, that's okay. Um, go ahead and mix that into the batter. So I'm just, right now, uh, I'm just dropping the blueberries on top with the liquid, and I'm just making sure that the liquid doesn't settle all in one place. So now I'm gonna take the fork and mix the blueberries in, just kind of gently. You want to do this kind of gently so that you, you get a kind of nice marbling so that the, you have dark spots and uh, lighter spots. Once the banana bread comes out of the oven, you get a really nice color to it. Now I'm going to take this mixture and I'm going to bake it in the oven for one hour and five minutes at 350 degrees. So I, I baked the banana bread batter for an hour and five minutes and this is what we got. You go and your color um, should look kind of like this it's a dark brown color uh, especially on the edges I like it a little crispy on the edges uh, but if you want yours to be lighter in color and you don't prefer the crispy um, texture you can bake it for an hour to make it um, less crispy so if you're unsure whether it's done or not just take a fork or a chopstick I like to use a chopstick because um, it leaves less holes and just uh, puncture it uh, near the middle and when you remove the chopstick and there's no batter clinging to it um, that's how you know it's done. While waiting for our banana bread to cool I just wanted to share some tips that I've learned through the years of uh, doing this recipe. Uh, one is to make sure you use, uh, this is very important, to make sure you use ripe bananas. So if your bananas are a little green like this you don't want to use them, they're not as sweet and banana bread won't be sweet. You want to make sure that the um, the skin is yellow and even a little dark uh, in some spots. This is actually the banana I just used to bake the banana bread. Blueberries. I've always used frozen blueberries for that. I just find that they're so flexible. Whenever you want to bake, um, just pop them in the microwave to defrost. Um, you know, I just have a giant bag of this in the freezer uh, year round, and yet, you know, yeah, you can have blueberries year round in your baked goods. I just started using pineapple in this recipe recently and um, this is the kind I use so if you use about half a can that will get you to uh, uh, roughly one cup of pineapples. Some other hints, um, you can use either uh, bread flour if you uh, bake a lot of bread or you can use all-purpose flour. I notice that there's no difference uh, between the two. Uh, this is a very flexible recipe so there are a lot of um, substitutions you can use. Um, you can use three bananas or just two and add another type of fruit. Um, you can use bread flour, all-purpose flour. You can add vanilla at the end or you can leave it out. The raisins and the nuts, th those are all optional as well. Um, I've done this so many different ways and I've messed up so many different times, but it usually comes out um, pretty good. And that's what I love about this recipe. It's very flexible. Um, for me, baking... Um, it's not a precise science, it's more of, um, you know, this process where there's an acceptable range of ingredients and uh, amounts of ingredients. And that's the type of baking that I like to do. We've let the banana bread cool for about an hour, and now we're going to uh, remove it from the bread pan and cut it. If you try to remove it from the bread pan um, for about an hour or before it cools in properly, it's going to um, um, break and crumble. So, um, I like to separate the banana bread from the pan with this plastic um, cake cutting knife. It's this cheap little knife that I got with a cake one time. I've kept it for this purpose because it, 
it bends, it doesn't scratch the pan. So I'm just gonna um, wedge the banana bread from the pan with the knife. Just go, go around the perimeter of the pan. Once you've done that, it should be nicely separated. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, invert it. There we go. I'll flip it around so we can take a look at it. Okay. So you notice that the, the bread's nicely brown on the sides and, and it's not burned or anything. It's just nice and brown. So I'm gonna take this bread knife and cut it. So as you can see, the banana bread is nice and moist, and it's very um, it has uh, very colorful. It has the um, purple, dark blues from the blueberries. It has um, kind of brownish red from the raisins. The the pineapple gives it a kind of yellow uh, color. Um, so there you go, and it's very moist. You can see that it almost has a um, a pudding-like consistency. Um, a lot of people who've tried this bread always note how moist it is and it's really hard to mess it up too because every time I bake it it comes out this way. It never comes out too dry um, and it's it's not too sweet. Um, it's just perfect. That's there you go. I'm gonna try pieces of the bread. It's nice and moist. It has the consistency of a cupcake almost, um, but a little more moist. Um, it's almost like, like I was saying earlier, bread pudding. Um, I've made it about a dozen times in the past month because it's around the holidays and I like to give it as a gift. So it doesn't wow me anymore, but I assure you it's very good and it will wow um, the people that you serve it to.